Hello children. Today we will discuss chapter number 9. The name of the chapter is Living Organisms and Their Surroundings. You can see in this picture different living organisms which includes plants as well as animals. Let us first understand what living organisms are. All the living things, the plants and animals, they come under the category of living organisms. Now, all these living organisms, they have developed certain body features in their body in order to survive in a particular place. We can understand this with the help of an example. Suppose in your vacations, you have gone to different different places. Like one student might have gone to some hilly areas. One student might have gone to Rajasthan or someone to Kanyakumari or Goa. So what will the different different children, they will bring their different experiences from the places. Like if you will miss, visit the mountainous areas, so what you will find, you will find the trees, uh, pine trees. And if you're going to Rajasthan or the places having desert, you'll find the, the animals like camel and cactus. And if you're going to Kanyakumari or Goa, then you'll find some palm trees over there and turtle as living organism. So what we have seen from the example that in different different places, different different type of organisms live. So in order to live in those conditions, the body of these organisms, it develops certain features. Like for example, the camel, it lives in desert where water is scarce because it has developed some features like hump. Now the hump of camel, it stores the water and food. So the camel can live for water and without water and food for few days because it contains the stored form of these two. Similarly, a yak which lives in Himalayan mountains, so its body has certain features. It will have some hooves which help it to run or which help it to, it has its body for, it has got hairs in its body which will keep it warm in the cold climate. Similarly, a turtle is there which can live on both land and water because it has got some, its body has got some specific features developed for this. Now, all the living organisms, they need a place to live, where they live and where all their requirements are fulfilled, like their food, shelter and protection from animals. All these requirements are fulfilled. So this place is known as habitat. So, in simple language, what we can say that the area or the surroundings in which an organism live is called habitat. Now, habitat has two components or two parts which constitute the habitat. One is the living and another one is the non-living. The living components are the biotic components and the non-living components are abiotic components. We need to understand here that all the living organisms, they require both the components in order to survive. Like, we require biotic components. What are the biotic components? Biotic components are the ones which are obtained from living organisms, plants and animals. So what do we obtain from plants and animals? Food. Only the food requirement is fulfilled from the biotic components. But all the other requirements, the requirement of light, the requirement of air, the requirement of water, the requirement of soil, all these uh, are fulfilled with the help of abiotic components. So in this way, we can see that both the components are required or are necessary for our survival or for the survival of all living organisms. Now, in order to survive, the organisms have developed certain body features as we have discussed in the starting of the chapter itself that the specific features or certain habits are developed inside the organism so that it can survive in different climatic conditions. Like a fish, it can survive in water. So all its requirements are fulfilled in water. How? Its body is streamlined and the streamlined body, it allows us, allows the fish to travel in water or to cut through water and move forward. Similarly, it has got fins. Now the fins of the fish, they help it to change the direction. The gills present in fish, it help it to absorb the dissolved oxygen in water. Like the fish, it will not obtain the oxygen from the air. It will obtain the oxygen which is dissolved in the water itself. 
Now the adaptations, these are the features which are present inside the body of organism from earlier only. But then here is a term which is known as acclimatization. So let us understand this term firstly with the help of an example. Suppose sometimes we are going on a track to high uh, mountains. So after some time when we go to a particular height, we feel breathlessness. Why it happens? Because there is lack of oxygen as we move to higher altitudes. But after some time, we feel normal. Why? Because our body adjusts itself after some time. So this adjustment is no, uh, quite temporary. So these changes which occur on a temporary basis in our body in order to make an organism better suited for the change in the surroundings is known as acclimatization. So the difference between acclimatization and adaptation is that adaptation refer to the permanent changes or the permanent features which are already present in the organism in order to survive in a particular area. But acclimatization are the temporary changes which are taking place or which happens in order to make an organism better suited for the changed environment but for a less period of time. These are not permanent in nature. We'll come back to habitat again. So we have so far we have seen that the habitat is the place where an organism lives. Now and the components which makes up the habitat are the biotic components and the abiotic components. The habitat, it is basically divided into two types. What are they? Aquatic and terrestrial. Aquatic habitat, the habitat which are or in or around water. Aqua, the word aqua, it refers to water. So the aquatic habitat or the organism which live in water, they form the aquatic habitat like uh, these aquatic habitat is again divided into saline and freshwater habitat. Oceans, seas, certain lakes, these are saline habitats because they have salty water. Whereas rivers, ponds, sea, lakes, these are the examples of freshwater habitats. Sim uh, similarly, terrestrial habitats. What is the meaning of terrestrial? Terrestrial is made from a word terra. Terra means land. So the, all the habitats which are present on land. These are terrestrial habitat. This will include your forest, deserts, grasslands, mountains, coastal areas, everything. We'll start with terrestrial habitats and in that we'll start with deserts. Now we very well know deserts. Deserts, these are the areas which receive very less rainfall and hence they are having very less vegetation. The soil which is present in desert, it is mostly sandy. So it's not very suitable for growing crops over there. And also water bodies in desert, they are very few in number. And if they are present, they are very far, far from each other. One specific feature about a desert is that they are hot during the day, but cooler during the night. Now, if the organisms they need to survive in deserts so they will need to have certain features in their body. We'll understand this with the help of the example of cactus in plants and camel in animals. Cactus. The stem of cactus it is usually fleshy and swollen. It's not usual brown in color. It has developed green color. Why so? Because uh, in usual plants the process of photosynthesis is being carried out with the help of leaves. Because leaves has got chlorophyll and it carries out the process of photosynthesis. But one thing more about leaves is that the leaves are also the site of transpiration. Means from where the water loss takes place. So if in the case of cactus, the leaves would be the center of photosynthesis, what would have happened? The lots and lots of water would have transpired from the plants and they won't be able to survive here. So they have changed themselves. They have developed an adaptation. They have developed certain features. What are they? The leaves, these are now converted into spines. So no transpiration is going to be there or minimum transpiration. And the process of photosynthesis will now be carried out through the stem. The stem also has got some waxy coating in order to prevent the water loss. Leaves, they are turned into spines and the roots because they have to search the water. So, the, so they go deep under the soil. So in this way, we can see that all the parts of these, this plant has developed certain features in order to survive in the hot climate of deserts.
where you can see the picture of cactus the stem or the fleshy part the green part which is visible is the stem and the spines are the leaves of the plant adaptations in animals in desert when we talk about animals and in our mind the first picture comes of a camel which is there in the desert so camel it has developed a hump now what is it uh, the use of this hump it can store the food in water for many days so in this way it can survive without water and food for many days similarly it has got long legs now what is the purpose of these long legs it is to keep the body away from the heat of the desert land or the desert sand the skin is dry so if the skin is dry so it will not sweat so the water loss will be minimized similarly its dung is dry and it has got padded hooves now why the what is the purpose of these padded hooves so that it can walk on the sand so in this way we can see that the camel has developed certain features through the help of which it can survive easily in the deserts some other animals are also there in desert these are comes under the category of reptiles like rats and snakes are there they do not have legs that a camel has but still they are able to survive in desert how they uh, manage to do that they stay away from this intense heat during the day they stay in their burrows deep in the sand and during the night they come out because we have already learned that the deserts they are hotter during the day and colder during the night in mountains mountains areas uh, the first picture that comes in our mind when we hear mountains is that the mountains or the hilly areas which are always covered with ice so the organisms here they need to develop certain features which can just prevent themselves from the cold temperature extreme cold temperature the trees these are mainly cone shaped and uh, having sloping branches and the leaves of these trees are needle like why the needle like leaves are there because it won't let the water and snow stand over here uh, stand over it for a longer time uh, the animals here are like yaks are there they have long hair now what is the purpose of these long hairs these long hairs will keep the body of the yaks warm snow leopard it has got thick fur on its body including its feet and toes to protect it from the intense heat when it walks on the snow similarly the mountain goat it has to run on the slopey area so what it has got it has got some strong hooves the polar bear some certain modifications which are present in polar bear are like it has got white fur now what is the use of this white fur it will merge easily with the surroundings and this fur is also thick which will keep it warm during the cold temperature polar bear snow leopard and mountain goat grasslands now grasslands these are the areas which are dominated by grasses with a few trees or shrubs but mostly you'll find grasses here and uh, usually the color of the grasses here you'll find uh, light uh, light brownish you will feed, uh, see the area is slightly light brownish in color the trees they have long deep roots now what is the purpose of long deep roots here these uh, roots they will hold it to the soil the leaves these are at a height so that the animals they cannot easily eat them now in grasslands we can understand the concept of predator and prey very easily these are the two terms which we need to understand one is the predator one is the prey now the animals which hunts the other animal for food these are predators and those animals which becomes the food of another animal these are prey like for example we'll consider the example of lion and deer a lion is a predator so if a predator is there it will have it must have certain features in its body similarly a prey will have uh, certain features on its body let us understand a lion it is a predator so what are the different different modifications in its body its hooves are padded now what is the purpose of the padded hooves there it can stay silent and then attack the animal silently from behind it has got big claws and these big claws they are hidden but these come outside only when it attacks like if it is running and if the claws are open then it might happen that the claws gets broken but in order to protect these claws what it uh, it just uh, hides its claws and it opens them up only when it attacks the eyes of the uh, lion or the uh, tiger these are always in front why so because 
it will see clearly uh, the prey from very far the teeth they are big and pointed in order to tear the flesh of its prey now let's see what are the adaptations or what are the specific features in the prey the deer which is a prey in this case has long but strong legs so that it can run very fast its eyes now in the case of lion we have seen that the eyes were in the front why because it has to focus on the prey but here in the case of deer the eyes are on the sides why so that it can see in different directions and it can protect itself from any upcoming danger at even the hint of a trouble it runs very fast to escape danger so children uh, we have discussed today the role of different different features in the different different organisms which makes it able to survive in different conditions we'll continue with this in the next part that's all for the day thank you have a very good day ahead